Great to have you back. Um, believe it or not, I've been teaching here at Northeastern for 20 years. And uh, we're very proud of this place, folks. For one thing, Northeastern had more applications for admission to its freshman class this past fall than any non-public university in America. 43,000 applications. 43,000 applications for 2,800 spots in the freshman class. For another, uh, as all of you know, uh, this university's great trademark is a combination of study and work, real work, paid work. And it's one of the reasons I'm here, because I don't think you can beat the co-op program, and I don't know why more universities in the United States don't do it. And thirdly, we have increasingly things like this, which open up our doors to you and to the public generally, and not only ask you to be involved, but see if we can't help stimulate good, lively thinking on the part of good, lively citizens. And so here we are. Uh, you know you're getting old when we're debating the role of government for at least the 17th time in my life. <laughs> and we keep doing this. Um, every president I know, or every candidate for the presidency, says that he's going to do it better, leaner, and shrink the federal government. Ronald Reagan said that. We left office after eight years. There were more people working for the federal government than had been working for it when he, when he got there. Um, George Bush said the same thing and was responsible, for better or for worse, for what has to be the most intrusive federal education bill we've ever had, which dramatically expanded the role of the federal government in K through 12 education and kind of turned the president, whoever the president is, into the national superintendent of schools. How did that happen? <laughs> and curiously enough, folks, the only national administration in my adult lifetime which in fact shrank the size of the federal government was the Clinton administration, which reduced the number of federal employees by about 400,000. Something which, for reasons I don't understand, Al Gore never took credit for during the 2000 campaign, even though he was the guy who was principally responsible for the so-called reinvention project that did that. Well, here we are again, debating the size of the government, the role of the government, and especially the role of the federal government. And of course, that raises another interesting wrinkle. Is it the federal government that we're worried about? Is that the one that people think is getting too big? Um, at one point, back during the Reagan years, we were talking about the devolution revolution. Any of you remember that? What was the devolution revolution, anyway? It wasn't a question so much as shrinking the government generally, it was an effort to what? To devolve functions of the federal government, which a lot of people thought had gotten too big to the state and local governments. It had less to do with shrinking the size of state and local governments than giving them greater responsibility and shrinking, to some extent, what the federal government was doing. Ronald Reagan, quite famously, and with some justification, seems to be said, hey, what have we got a federal department of education for? Why is the federal government doing this? The same people that elected governors and state legislatures and local school boards elected me. They know a lot more about the schools in their states and communities than I do. We ought to be doing other stuff. You know, we ought to be concerned about foreign policy and national security, maybe even health care. He offered to take over Medicaid if the states would take back welfare. We made a great mistake in not <laughs> taking him up on that part. And I speak as one governor who opposed it at the time. It's a mistake. He had something there. So here we are again, folks. We're at it again. And uh, I think it's quite clearly going to be one of the issues in the upcoming presidential campaign. Um, and of course, one of the issues we've got to deal with is well, okay, if we're talking about smaller government, are we talking about a smaller role for the United States in international affairs? 800 American bases all over the world, 11 carrier groups. We're spending more money on defense than the rest of the world combined, practically. I mean, what about that side of the government's role? Particularly at a time when the threats we face have a lot less to do with the Cold War and they have to do with terrorism and those kinds of things. Important but F-35s and ABMs and missiles aren't going to deal with terrorism. Can we agree? 
they're totally irrelevant. So this is a great topic, and it's great to have you. Uh, I'm going to flip this over to Nani. And by the way, very interesting, incidentally, um, Nani Burns, Mike Dukakis, Deval Patrick, and Bill Well, all practice law at the firm of Hill and Barlow. We were very proud of that. We left and it blew up. <laughs> no longer exists. Can you believe that? Three governors and a distinguished judge and insurance commissioner, all of whom came out of that firm. So, without further ado, I want to introduce Nani to you. She's, she's going to say a few words and then we'll flip it back to Barry and he's going to make a formal introduction of her. Distinguished speaker who, by the way, many, many years ago, when I was in my first term as governor, and Bob was the top staff person to a guy named Senator Bill Proxmire. Remember him? We had a little tag team game involving the regulation of banks, even back then. Remember? It was kind of fun. Bob may want to tell you that. Anyway, without further ado, Honey Burns. 